Today we're going to do a video on the electrical testers that you can use with the uh, testing the circuits in the dollhouse. There's four different ones that are readily available. Uh, the 12 volt tester, which comes in most of the kits that you uh, will buy. Uh, a 9 volt battery tester, which I really like and all of the classes that I teach we make one in the class for you to take to the different trade shows that you're going to. We'll discuss how you use that 9 volt battery tester. The continuity tester, uh, which a lot of people don't understand what the point is of a continuity tester. And then I'm going to show you the um, dollhouse tester that I make that is especially designed for just doing uh, dollhouses. Uh, it does everything that it's supposed to and nothing that is not supposed to. Let's go ahead to the workbench and take a look at all First of these. What I want to talk about is the 12 volt tester. 12 volt tester is the one that you receive in most of the uh, dollhouse kits that you would pick up. Um, the two of them that I have here, this one is from Circuit and this one is the one that I sell. They're basically the same thing. You just have the pins at the end. Uh, I will mention that the distance is the same on the two of these. And there's a reason for that, which in one of the other videos, it explains how you can use this for marking uh, the ceiling or the uh, wall for your uh, ceiling adapters that circuit sells or uh, for putting in the uh, sconce adapters. Um, other than that, it is a very simple tester. You can go along on your tape run that you would have and simply line up the pins to one strip or the other of the copper um, runs that are in the flat tape wire. You push in and if you have 12 volts present, the light comes on on the end of the, the tester. Uh, using mine, it's the only difference is that the light is in the base of it rather than at the end of it. But they basically do exactly the same thing. And it's an excellent tester to work with to see if you have... Uh, an electrical current running through the tape wire after you install it into the dollhouse. I can show you also on the dollhouse itself right here, uh, I can take the tester and I have a run of flat tape on the floor here that I put in. Uh, I'll just push it into the corner here and the light comes on so I know I have 12 volts that are present in the tape wire. That's basically all there is to the uh, 12 volt tester. It's something that you definitely should have one. Uh, I don't know how you can wire the dollhouse successfully without having some of these testers. The second tester that I want to talk about is the 9 volt battery tester. The 9 volt battery tester is something that uh, I sell and I uh, when I teach my classes I have uh, one that we put together and assemble in every one of the classes that I have. It's something that I believe that you should have especially if you're going to trade shows or you're going to a store to see to buy individual lights. The nicest thing about it is that it's very portable, it's very simple to use and you can test all of the different fixtures that you uh, might be purchasing before you take them home. I also use them to test all of the lights um, uh, before I wire them into the dollhouse. Let's say that we've gone to the store and we picked up one of these uh, lights here it has the typical plug that's on the end, but we can take our 9 volt tester. Now, no, it is 9 volts, so it isn't a full 12. When this will work on any of the 12 volt uh, lights, uh, but it won't be as bright as if we um, used it with 
uh, a 12 volt system but it makes a perfect tester to take around to the stores or to the shows to make sure that the light fixture that you have actually works all I need to do is uh, push it on the plunger on the back of the um, probe and a little hook comes out of the back here which is a, a brass hook and I can attach that to the uh, pins coming off of the plug on the light and you can see that two of the lights have come on the first thing I obviously would check is that the light bulb is tight on here uh, and causing it not to work and I can simply uh, screw it in and we see that this light fixture works so it's safe to either install into the dollhouse or to take home if you're purchasing it. Uh, another use of this is for testing LEDs. On the street light here I have uh, put an LED into the light itself and if you're aware of how an LED works it has polarity so it makes a difference of what side of the circuit is connected to the positive of your uh, light switch or to your circuit. Um, here again I have this typical white plug that you can get and if I hook this up by just putting it onto the pins uh, I don't get anything to work. All you need to do is uh, reverse the pins on here or the uh, tester leads and put them back on the pins and it does light up. It's telling us that the red lead is touching the pin that's the positive side of the LED and you have to connect the positive side uh, to the uh, proper connection on there to make the LED work. If you hook it up backwards it doesn't hurt anything it just won't light. This way I know now that this bottom pin on here is the positive pin and I'm going to take that and I'll take a red magic marker and mark that side of the uh, plug which you can see that I've already done on here uh, telling me that that's the side that needs to be plugged into the positive section. If we have wired our dollhouse properly so that the red on the flat tape is positive, I have an outlet that has been put into the tape wire here. I now can hold this so that the red side of the plug just plugs into the red side of the tape and lo and behold we've got our street light uh, will light up. There's no problem at all. Again showing you that a little bit differently if you buy an LED fixture and you're plugging it in if we plug it in backwards absolutely nothing happens. All we need to do is unplug it, turn the plug 180 degrees and then plug it back in and it'll come on. That pretty well explains the 9 volt tester and as again as I said this is something I think everybody should have and learn to use especially in testing the individual items uh, before you're going to install them into the dollhouse so that you definitely uh, know that uh, the thing is working before you put it in because it's a real nuisance to have install a light fixture to only find out that it doesn't work and you're going to have to take it back out of the uh, dollhouse. The third one I want to talk about is the uh, continuity tester. I've got an uh, inexpensive continuity tester here. It's a very simple little tool. It just tells you whether you are able to get a current to travel from point A to point B on if the flat tape for instance or you can test through the hard wire as well. Um, it has the pin on the one end, it has AA batteries on the inside and a little light bulb that's in the uh, end of this thing. If I touch the alligator clip to the pin we've got a light that turns on and it tells me that electricity is traveling from 
point A, which is my alligator clip, to point B, which is the uh, pin uh, that we can stab into our, our wire. If I test from uh, one end to the other end of the flat tape wire, I need something for the alligator to connect with so I can stab in there. And I'm going to take a T-pin because I can put the clip right on there and it gives me something to hold on to. And I can stab at this end and then come back here and stab. And you can see that the light comes on and it tells me that from point A to point B, we're getting electrical uh, current that travels, that the continuity is good. Um, I set up a little bit of an example of how you can use this. Uh, I would generally tell you that we do not want to use it with power on, so I'll unplug the power supply. If you notice, I have a light connected at the end here. The light is not on. If I test all the way up here where the light is connected, come all the way to this end on the red uh, wire, I do not get the light to come on. So there's a break in the line someplace. It's telling me that uh, we do not have continuity from point A to point B. I'm going to test the black side of the tape, and I do get the light to come on. So we do have a good run on the blue side or the black side of the tape run which is our positive connection. Because it did not work here, someplace between point A and point B the line has been cut. I'm using this as an example. This is, uh, let's say it's the uh, outlet run that you have in your dollhouse that's at one inch from the floor, runs all the way around the room and when you put wallpaper in, you trimmed it and you made a cut across the flat tape. I actually used my razor blade and I made a cut right here in the, uh, in the red side of the run. If I go on this side of the run and touch all the way at the power side, the light comes on. That tells me I am getting electricity from point A to point B up here. If I go on this side, I don't get it. So in between where I touched here and touched here must be where my break is. I can define that a little bit better by keep going closer and closer to where the break is to find out where it stops and then I can locate where the break is and if I'm able to pull up the wallpaper in that section I can fix this quite easily by just soldering over that joint and that'll fix the run. But an easier way, let's assume that your dollhouse is completely finished, you've done all of the painting and the wallpaper is completed. Uh, you don't want to tear anything up. Where you ran the uh, uh, the one inch strip or all the way around the room, you went from room to room and wrapped around the doorways. I also try to always bring it up to the front Got face. The flat tape running all the way around this room. Let's say I had a cut over here on it and I can't get to it. All I need to do is bring my positive connection anywhere on the dollhouse and solder it to this edge or this corner or at the do doorway where I have it exposed and I can get to it. I can uh, energize that strip depending on where the cut is and what side actually has electricity going to it. Um, and we can repair it without going directly to where the, the break is. I can show you that here. Uh, I can take the red side of the circuit from this run down here and I can solder it anywhere up here and I'll take my soldering iron and I'll make a little bubble. I'll bring down 
the red wire, solder it to the red side on the, the side of the brake, which is away from where the electrical connection is on this end. And then when we plug this back in, our light comes on. So the electricity, instead of traveling from this end with the ground and the positive going to our light, it now is using the ground this way and it's taking the positive side from this strip that's here and we jumped it over to here which made our light work. Now let's go to the, uh, the dollhouse tester which I make. This one I use all of the time. Uh, it just does everything that it's supposed to and nothing that it's not supposed to. <clears throat> and I actually make these completely myself. I sit and solder them on my kitchen table. It has three LEDs at this end, a red, a blue, and a yellow. It has a toggle switch uh, that is either off and, uh, what does it say, voltage. And at the, when you flip it up, it says continuity. So this will work as a continuity tester, and it will work as a voltage tester. What's nice about it is it also tells you whether you have AC or DC uh, circuit. Uh, and if it is DC, it will tell you what side of the circuit is positive. Uh, comes in very, very handy when you're wiring LEDs into the dollhouse. By the way, this is an incandescent light that's on here, but we can go back to our street light and uh, give you an idea of what I'm talking about so we know which side is, is positive. Um, I'm going to put my test leads back into the front of this and obviously red to red and black to black. The top line on here I have hooked up to an AC uh, uh, power supply or transformer. I'm going to go ahead and push my probes into the uh, wires and being with the toggle switch on the voltage side I have three lights that come on there. What that is telling me is that I have an AC circuit. And yes, because the yellow light is on, I have 12 volts present. And because the blue and the red are on together, it is AC. If I go down to the second run that's on here and stab into those, I only get two lights on. And that's showing me that yes, there's 12 volts present because the yellow light is on. Uh, but it is a DC uh, circuit, and because the red light is on, my red probe is touching the positive side of the circuit. If I reversed where I plug in or push in my probes so that the black is plugged into the red and the red is into the black, I then get the blue light and the yellow light coming on. Again, the yellow light is showing me I have 12 volts present, but it, the blue light is on telling me that the black probe is touching the positive side of the circuit. They don't make a black LED. So that works for the voltage tester. If I throw it up to the top, when I cross the two leads at the end, I have a buzzer that goes off. And then I use it just like I was explaining this continuity tester by itself. And as I said, we normally would do that with the power off. And I can go ahead and go from one end to the other. And you can see that I have circuit that will go through there. And that's because we repaired it. Uh, it is actually going from here over to there because we still have that break in there. But we can, we know that that strip is live from one end to the other. I might mention one other thing. When you're testing uh, your electrical uh, pieces, I can show you that uh, there is no electricity. Our light is not on. But if I go from the black to the red, the buzzer goes off. The reason for that 
is because we have a light in here. Once you start putting lights in, and I don't think I can unscrew the light. Let me grab my bulb screwer. Okay, I can take the bulb screwer and unscrew this bulb. And take it out all together. And now when I use my probe tester, first of all, I always test it to make sure that the buzzer is working. Plug it into the red and the black, uh, and it doesn't the buzzer doesn't go off. Because there's a light bulb there, the filament is actually shorting out those two circuits. So if you're trying to use the continuity tester after you have wired your dowelhouse with lights, you either need to unscrew all of the bulbs in the dowelhouse to be able to utilize this, or you're going to show a dead short across all of your lines and in reality there is no short it's just that it, the electricity is traveling through the light bulb to get between the red and the black that's on there. That pretty well explains the four testers that are available. I will mention that what I used to use is a voltmeter. The voltmeter is it's problematic because you have to know what you're working with to be able to use it. Uh, for instance, you need to know whether it's AC or DC. Uh, if you set it on AC and try to read a DC circuit, it'll actually blow the fuse that's in that circuit. Um, if you use continuity and you touch the 12 volts of a live circuit, it'll blow the circuit that's on here. So it doesn't work if you don't know exactly what you're doing. So I don't ever use that anymore. I made my tester so that if you were to use, well, let's plug in the 12 volts. I can screw the bulb back in to show you that we actually have the circuit working. And I have it on continuity. And if I stab the black and the red, absolutely nothing happens. And yet, the continuity still works. I can flip it then over to the voltage, and we can test the circuit again, and we can see that that works. So by shorting it out, it did no harm to the tester. If you're only wiring one dial house, you may not want to spend the money for it, but it is very, very handy if you're doing a lot of uh, work and trying to put in electrical wiring into the dollhouse.